in the sky, gazing far into the night. I raise my hand to the fire, but it's no use, cause you can't stop it from shining through. Hello there and welcome to the latest Elite FPL podcast. It's the uh, Game Week 4 prediction and uh, it's with myself, Jason, and very, very special guest and friend of the show, J&O, in the know. I've been waiting to say that. <laughs> You've stole Hello, his line. You stole his line from I, him, man. I'm, I'm not sure you deliver it quite the same way yet. You're getting there. <laughs> You're getting there. The more you do it, the better you'll get. Do you, want, do you want to just quickly do it for the audience before we open? Oh, it? I wasn't expecting to have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll do, I'm the man we'll in the know, J and O. The one, absolutely superb. No, um, like, like I said, it's it's it's, it's a genuine honour to have J and O on um, on the show. I've I've been watching his content since last season. I just think it's absolutely fantastic, and we all know who the guy is. And um, we we don't need to be blowing any more smoke up his backside. But... <laughs> No, but in all seriousness, um, it's absolutely fantastic you coming on the show, and we can only thank you um, for, for for joining us this evening. And it, like I said, it's the game week four predictions. Um, we'll be uh, going through what we think the scores will be 
I'll be doing the usual standard of uh, giving you what the history is suggesting the scores will be, a little statistic based around the last six fixtures involving the corresponding teams. We'll then, of course, reveal what uh, myself, Jason and JNO will be doing with our teams this uh, particular game week. And then, of course, we open the forum to you lot. So we'll be uh, taking calls that you can uh, call in for JNO for him to take and, of course, uh, ask him anything you want within reason, all fantasy football related. Um, but uh, no, I mean, like, like I said to Jason, um, we wanted to start off by just asking you a few questions. But Jason, I know you're going to be dying to do your usual who's in chat. So uh, take it away, my friend. All right, guys, we've got the usual suspects in chat. We've got one Rovers Vlogs, Fantasy Football Focus, Jeff McGregor. Uh, Shalom Gesh in chat. It's a new name that I haven't read out before. We've got Matt Brunton, also known as a midget neck. Michael Foley, uh, Shaban, Greasy Trumpet. We've got um, Blue Roman. Uh, Anil Dasan, I, I can't say some of these names. Ben Wheatcroft, Yash Wardan Jain. Uh, we've got L- FPL Little Saints, Colin Barker. We've got um, JP Goes. We've got Brew in chat. We've got Kevin Van Beek in chat. Buster Barnes, lots and lots of people. Noel Sphinx, Daniel Chikelu, um, Harry Doherty, Gravy Dave. Welcome, Gravy Dave. We've got Anarag in chat as well. Peter Shuka, Rezzy Desi, or as Steve likes to call him, Rezzle Dezzle. Um, we've got uh, Cameron Rudge, Jack Parry 429, Dino Bino FM, Ian Anderson, Shane McGuinness, Tom Barker, we've got Tezza Goat, Norman Conquest, and many, many, many more. Uh, hello, FBL Mechanic, how are you doing? Um, welcome to this evening's show, previewing game week four. Um, this week for me is just absolutely flown by, I don't know about you guys. Um, and uh, we've got a lot to discuss. Um, but I echo uh, Steve O's comments, it's an absolute privilege to have JNO. Uh, join us this evening um, to be a guest on the show and um, I'm looking forward to what he's doing with his team and discussing with you guys and basically previewing all things Game Week 4. No, absolutely. But like like I said, I just wanted to kick off for, for, for myself, really, for my own personal benefit, because like I said, I've been watching your content, JNO, for the, well, let's be honest here, about the last eight, nine months. And as we said off air, um, I, I like you a lot because you're very relatable. And I just wanted to ask, really, what what made you get into FPL tipping? Because I know on your live stream, you said that you used to do um, computer game live streaming, and then you decided to go into FPL um, well, tipping, basically. What, what, what was the journey? I mean, the journey was a bit of an accident, if I'm going to be completely honest. Um, I started off about 2013 thinking, OK, I watch YouTube all the time. So I want to do something with YouTube. At the time, everyone was doing video games. So I tried that. And literally, for anyone out there that thinks, okay, overnight success, easy, so on and so forth. No, two years, 32 subscribers. Sorry to sorry to interject, but when when you said that on your own live stream, I was I was genuinely interested when you when you brought up about live streaming and gaming. Were you actually very good at playing computer games basically and what was your um the game of choice my my approach was to be more humorous i wouldn't say i was amazing at any game in particular um i'm okay at games fifa football manager would be the ones that i'm probably most known for uh football manager i did get a decent following in and uh telltale games which of course shut and then open back up again now because it's been bought by someone else but yeah just games i generally enjoy playing and then i tried to be entertaining with it so that was my way into gaming. I think the one that did the best was probably me playing Slenderman because I am absolutely terrible at any scary game. Like, just I will jump at literally everything. Uh, but yeah, 32 subscribers in two years. So it just it wasn't working. Mm. So I tried something new. I started up a channel and my channel has gone through various names before it got to FPL today. It started off as JNO certified. That's where JNO came from. And it was meant to be me talking about everything I enjoyed. And one of those things happened to be FPL. And I probably got very lucky. I made a video on FPL about a day or two after it came out. Just happened to have the right days off to do it. And for a channel that I'd just started about 2,000 views on the first video. And I was like, okay, there's some views here. This is working. So I did that and some other videos. It formed into what was called JNO United, which was just a football-related channel, so football games, including FPL. And then it was just very obvious everyone had subscribed from FPL content. So it changed to FPL Today about three years ago. And from there, 
we went on to what we are today. <laughs> wow. Well, yeah, and how have you've grown massively, haven't you, yeah. over, that, over that short period of time? Um, and sorry, Steve, carry on. What were you going to say? No, I was, I was just going to say, my, again, this is just to help me understand your, um, your, your journey. I mean, my, from what I've seen of yourself, it's always been like your 10, 15 minute, minute tip videos. I haven't seen you personally do much live streaming, which is the kind of content that I love watching. I know for a fact that like everybody here knows that you do the Wildcats live stream, but from a solo point of view, I didn't see much. So did you used to live stream um, much at all in the, uh, you know, back a few years? So yeah, in about 2017, I started live streaming and, um, it went really well for a while and my general approach to the live streaming was to be relaxed be that person you could come and watch and you just talk some fpl with like it wasn't meant to be too overly produced it wasn't meant to be me being too serious um there's a, a famous stream where it went for about three hours and i was drinking while doing the stream <laughs> and yeah Dangerous. i made some that that, <laughs> that, that, that sounds familiar everybody <laughs> And yeah, I made some drunk transfers, but they paid off. I believe I brought in Eden Hazard before one of his big hauls, and everyone from then on was like, keep making drunk transfers. But I had a second uh, kid. I've got two daughters, and just I couldn't fit the stream in around her sleep cycle because if she was going to sleep, she'd be in the cot. Cot's in the bedroom, can't stream. So yeah, uh, I stopped probably game week two, uh, 22 sorry last year and then wow. yeah i've now got back into it because now she's sleeping in a separate room i can get back into the swing of things although it's it's not felt natural it's one of those things when you're doing it all the time you get used to doing it all the time and then when you stop and suddenly go back in it's like i still don't feel like i found my groove yet doing the live streams but i, I think i'll get there uh, and i've got i've got to say and like i said for me personally i think the live stream format i i genuinely think they're fantastic i i really do it's for me it's the fact that you the host isn't just giving your own opinion you're kind of speaking with members of exactly. the fdl community from around the world and you're yeah it is your opinion but it's answering their questions i mean what do you personally think of live streaming i'll be honest it's a lot more difficult than uh, doing videos while a video That's probably right. takes I would say video you say video takes longer probably like as far as the whole process you've got to design everything every single video for the graphics you have to do the research of course you then have to record the video then you have to edit it now because I've done it for about four years now I've got quicker and quicker as time's gone on but still the process takes time um, whereas live streaming while you still got to do all the research you can do you can just kind of turn up, sit down. Once you've set it up for the year, you can turn up, sit down, you do a quick bit of edits, and then it's just interacting with people. And if you play the game, you're going to have opinions. Every now and again, you get stumped by a question. But that interaction drives the content. You don't have to drive it necessarily all yourself. So I actually prefer live streaming. It's just family-wise, I can't always get on to live streaming. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think absolutely. that... I think... I think like a lot of the time when it comes to live streaming, when it's just one person or yourself doing it, um, even with a chat, it can be quite challenging. And like me and Steve, we've got a good relationship in terms of like our opinions that we bounce off of each other. We, we have a conf, we have a bit of a contrast in certain things when it comes to FPL um, makes good conversation. And I know that you, yourself with the Wildcats, you know, having, having the group of you there, you can yeah. you can you know you can have a discussion and um i certainly think that you know that just aids in the in the live stream format yeah, definitely. it really does absolutely i was i was going to say jay you know so how did the fpl wildcats come about because obviously it's it's four of you all all four different uh, youtube content creators how did it actually come about yeah it was mainly nim's brainchild uh, fpl nim freer mm. uh when she started uh, I noticed she'd started and I generally like to take the approach of helping people. Like I personally think it's a community. Yes, everyone wants to have this amount of subs, this amount of views, so on, so far, so forth. But I really feel like at the end of the day, if you help someone out, then they're more inclined to say, invite you out uh, on the shows, 
help you out in the future, so on and so forth. And it's a community. There's space for all of us to make content and all of it to be consumed by different people. Some people like me, some people don't. They can go and check out other people. So, yeah, generally I'll help people out. I let her do one of my shows when I'd lost my voice once. So I think from that, and she'd seen me live stream and so on, and she'd asked me some questions about it. I think I was the person, one of the people she would go to when she came up with this brainchild. And we took it from there, really. And of course, and of course, the last year, it was quite recent, the actual event, you guys were nominated for an award at the Football, Football Blogging, Blogging Awards, Awards 2019. How, yes. how, how did that feel? And more importantly, what was the actual day and evening like? Well, they did a blog Whoa. about, by the way, the blog you did was absolutely brilliant. I've watched it about three, oh, yeah, no, three times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. I love that. I still think my bits were the best, but you know. Um, <laughs> it's Kurt getting up yeah, in the morning yeah. that's the best. Ah, Kurt's quite funny, actually. Yeah, <laughs> just topless up in the yeah, morning. Doesn't like, yeah, doesn't care. Just doesn't care. Just going to video it all. Uh, yeah, it, it was good. I, it's the second one I've been to, actually. So, what was the yes. first one? That's interesting. I think it was 2017. I also got uh, nominated in the gaming category. But that year they didn't have uh, fantasy football, so they kind of put fantasy football with the gaming category. So I was up against guys like Mini Minter um, and uh, the guy who does Hashtag United. He won it, I believe, but I can't remember his name off the top of my head. Spencer. There you go, oh, Spencer yeah. FC. Yeah, Spen- yeah. Yeah. I was like, how am I against these guys? Like a completely different category. But yeah, I've been to two in Manchester now. Uh, it's a good event. It's good mm. to get to meet people. I like the fact that they've now got a fantasy football category. I think that's definitely something they should have. Oh, it's it's going to grow. It's uh, it's growing yeah. more and more. And like even the official game now, they've got their own FPL show. They're recognising that there's a there's a massive market for fantasy football um, content creation. And uh, I mean, there's such a great variety of channels already. And like obviously, we started uh, well. Steve-O and Dan started on Facebook originally away from the YouTube platform. I only just joined, joined um, last like last September, October time and we were posting onto YouTube for the first time. And um, we're quite new when it comes to the, the, the whole, the, the FPL audience on YouTube, but we're already experiencing a massive embrace from the community, which is, which is incredible. And um, we're just trying to make, you know, I think it's important that everyone has their own identity. And um, I think a lot, a lot of the variety is is just it's great for um for people after after content because there's a lot of it out there exactly exactly and that's why i think it should be something we all promote together yeah like yeah. end of the day if we work together we make better content for the community oh, and absolutely. i think that's the main goal no, no absolutely i mean yeah go on jason no no you couldn't say it better myself i mean um it's just a you know, it's just the, the the amount of um love and you know help that we've received from other content creators. You know, Capkin Gaming, I mean, FPL Davies. We've 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 um had Davy FPL on the show. We're Block FPL, another content creator. We're trying to you know we we I mean these are great people. We're making friends all the time, and um you know part of the reason we've got um such a great community is because we've engaged with other content creators and been, been, they've been so welcoming to us. No, absolutely. I mean, JNO, you mentioned Manchester, and it's a tedious link into, of course, this week's game week. <laughs> and it's game week four, and as ever, we uh, we like to do our predictions, what we think the score will be. Like I already mentioned at the start of the um, the, the pod, it was uh, we go through what we think, we go through what the history says, we go through what the stats say. I also um, go over who the popular captain picks will be this particular game week and what they've done in the past six fixtures versus the corresponding teams. Um, as ever, I total up some points uh, for each of us. Um, it's quite simply this. You get three points for the correct score. You get two points for close enough and one point for the outcome. Now, last week, I thought Charlie was going to win it, but he didn't. Uh, it was actually the history. The history came out on top. Um, of the three game weeks so far, Jason, unfortunately, has come nowhere. Well, actually, no. To be fair, in game week one, he came quite close to maybe, um, uh, you know, getting a point in total to move forward. But uh, other than that... Oh, in game week... Yeah, game week two and game week one. I apologise. What am I talking about? Last week, he didn't do so well. But this week, 
We go on to game week four. You mentioned Manchester. It's Southampton versus Manchester United. Jason, as a United fan, how are you feeling ahead of this particular game? Wow, well, good news that Redmond's injured. Yeah, so oh, is he? Yeah, oh, okay. yeah, yeah. Um, it's, so I think the Marshall um, doubt... Or I think he's almost. I think he's been confirmed out now for the game. Um, from the, from the news I've caught up with after finishing work today, uh, Luke Shaw out, Marshall out. I think it bodes well for being a Rashford owner. I am going to go with a two nil win for Man United away at Southampton with Rashford getting in on the points. You heard it here first. Well, I'm uh, <laughs> I'm going the opposite. Oh, but God. I'm giving you a lot of goal. I'm I'm going United to lose two one. Although now you've oh just mentioned God, that, no way. Really? With the fact that you've mentioned Redmond's injured, rubbish. Uh, I may change it to one one. In fact, you know what? I am. I'm going to change that to one one. I originally had Southampton to win, but I'm now going to change it to one one. I'm sorry, Jason. I just think United are a load of rubbish. All right. And All right. that statistic where. What is it? You've won three games in 13. 15. Oh, it's about probably 14 now. 14 it's games. a new season, though. Don't dwell on the past. It's three game weeks. No, I, I know <laughs> that. And they've done They've done nothing to Let's hope he starts me. Greenwood instead of um, Matter on the right. I think, I don't know. I think United is going to surprise you. I think they're going to, I think maybe more than two goals, but I'm going to go two goals as a conservative. I don't think they're going to concede. I think it's going to be a clean sheet and the wan perseverance, you know, is going to pay off. But... I'm not very good um, at predictions. So. <laughs> I, 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 I just, like I said, I just think United have been just, have, since since Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has taken over, barring that initial oh, 50 yeah, yeah. game or whatever it was and beat and run, they have been sinking badly. Well, a lot of the there. people in chat, about... a lot of people in the chat are going 1-1, one, 2-1 one, one to Saints, 1-1, one, 0-0. One, zero, zero. Really? Nil-nil, Penguin. Really? No goals at all. Well, I don't see a nil-nil. I mean, if... I don't see a nil-nil. Like, uh, I mean, what, I mean we've, we've, what do you think, Jano, on this game? Uh, see, I, I feel like this should be a game that Man United go and win, just, to, just to prove a point. Well, like Palace, had a mean? disappointing performance. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> well, my, my way of thinking is, because of Palace, they should, as players, go into this game and the quality they have, win. I would still go with a 1-1 draw. 1-1, oh. so you agree with me. Well, the history is going uh, a 2-1 victory to United. There's been two nil nils in this fixture. There's been two three twos in this fixture, which were both at Old Trafford. But a Man United are unbeaten in the last six. So uh, maybe that does bode well for, for Man United and yourself, Jason. Uh, moving on to the three o'clock kickers. And I will remind everybody now, we will do it at the end of the stream. But remember, we're going to be doing Elite FPL Soccer Saturday. So hopefully, I'm hoping from three o'clock, I'll be live streaming throughout the 3 p.m. kickoffs. And then I'm hoping to then go on a bit of a break for like 15 minutes or so and then cover the Burnley-Liverpool game. That is the plan. And then I'm probably going to go off air and then I'm hoping Jason will be able to take mm -hmm. over at approximately... Sometime yeah, sometime in the evening. So as I'll long as the train doesn't again. get delayed. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll be going to bed and Jason will do his own show. It'll be, it's going to to be just a day of elite fpl so remember that everybody from i'm hoping three o'clock um elite fpl soccer saturday but so we start off the three o'clock games it's chelsea versus sheffield united jason your uh, prediction for this game i'm gonna go with a chelsea win i'm gonna go with 2-1 to chelsea with tammy abraham and mason mount getting in on the points i i've said exactly the same score line chelsea can't seem to uh to to keep a clean sheet I think I, I don't know why there's this thing inside me which is saying that Lundstrom's going to score, but I, I I'm going to. I had that feeling. I had that feeling. Yeah. He's he, he's he's one of the best. Well, he's he, he, watching Sheffield United. He's probably the best player they've got, like on the field. He's definitely really? the best four million pound player. Uh, yeah. I am. I am absolutely <laughs> gutted. I'm absolutely gutted. I chose Rico over him, and I've been unable to transfer Rico out. But, but now Rico, we'll get to Rico. He he looks like he could be a starter now. But anyway, yeah. Um. Uh, so yeah. So you agreeing with me then, Steve? Oh, two, uh, two, I'm one. Saying two, one as well. Uh, J and O. I think they have more goals in them, Chelsea. So I would say 3-1. Oh. I do think second half will see the same thing, though, where Sheffield United do come into the game. And potentially there could be more goals for Sheffield United. But I'd say 3-1 uh, Chelsea. 
Dino Bino um, going with 2-0. Sorry, 2-2. FIFA Tom saying 2-0. Chelsea, Nick Nick saying 2-0. Chelsea. Um, we've got uh, Vig, Vig, Vig Nash in chat is agreeing with JNO. 3-1 to Chelsea. Philip saying 1-0 to Chelsea. Ace Adventurer saying 2-1 to Chelsea. A lot of people going with the two ones. Um, one all says Shalom. And Abraham with two goals says one Rovers Vlogs. I mean, that would be nice for Abraham owners. Um, Abraham, of course, being, um, uh, well, brought in by a lot of people after his two goals. Um but yeah, we'll um, move on to the Crystal Palace. What's the history well, say? Oh, so the history, yeah. Yeah, yeah. What's the history the say? History, they've only played each other twice, and that was back way back in two thousand and six, two thousand and seven, uh, and both games ended well. They ended two 0 and three 0 in Chelsea's favour, and the goal scorers um, were Lampard scored one. Um, I forgot here. Michael Ballack got two. <laughs> Uh, Shevchenko that. and Kalou, just to bring back a bit of nostalgia for you guys yeah. there. So, yeah, maybe Lampard will come off the bench himself and score against Sheffield United. But anyway, <laughs> moving on to Crystal Palace versus Aston Villa. I already gave my prediction the other day when someone asked me for advice about who to start out of. I think it was Gilbert or Kelly, I think. And I went, it's got to be Gilbert. Um, I think this is going to be 1 0 to Aston Villa. Mm, interesting. <laughs> I'm, I've gone with a boring game, nil nil. Yeah. With heat and to yeah. get a clean sheet, of course. Go on, Jay. You know what you're I don't know. I think Aston Villa have enough about them to score. So I'd say either 1 0 or 2 0 Villa. Oh, okay. Palace well, don't look. Palace don't look like score. Which, which score? Like 1 or 2 0, Jay? Oh, do I have to commit? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'll go 1 0 then. I'll give you 1 0 then. Well, interestingly, the history is going with a 1-0 victory to Crystal Palace. There have been four 1-0s involved in this particular game. Two for Aston Villa, two to Crystal Palace. There's been one 0 nil draw. Um, Crystal Palace, though, have won two um, out of the last six along with Aston Villa. So, yeah, it looks like it's going to be a very, very tight game. One goal in it either way, which is what we're thinking. Now then, this game I found so... The next game, Leicester versus Bournemouth, I'm finding really difficult to predict. Mm. Leicester just can't seem to be able to score more than two goals. Bournemouth for the biggest... Le- we'll get J&O's thoughts, actually, on Bournemouth in a second, but Bournemouth are just, for me, the biggest letdown of the season so far. And, uh, yeah, I'm going Leicester to edge this 2-1. Oh, Jason? Exactly the same. I think <laughs> I, I think Bournemouth's defence... Uh, oh, just Yeah, they're going to let in goals. Um, I think Madison and Vardy are going to be in on the points uh, in this game. And I think probably Callum Wilson will probably get a consolation. I think it'll be 2 1. But Rico's uh, going to play, so he's on my bench. Rico's going to be playing. <laughs> uh, Chino, before we get your prediction, how, how, how disappointed are you in Bournemouth this year? Uh, I mean, if you actually look at Wilson and King, they've not done awfully as far as returns. And then you do have Harry Wilson. So that seems to be a potential plus point if he keeps playing. Other than that, very disappointing, especially Fraser. I think Fraser was one a lot yeah. of people thought could continue uh, in the same vein. Of course, it has been three game weeks. Who knows? He seemed to last year be one of those players that when a lot of people lost faith, he'd turn up with like 12 points. So we'll see what happens. But yeah, I've been very disappointed. I think a lot of people with their first two fixtures went, okay, I'm going Bournemouth heavy and it didn't necessarily pay off as well as they'd have liked. But Wilson seems to be getting assist pretty much every game. Yeah. So that's Callum. So not awful, but I am disappointed. And if I had to go for a scoreline, I would probably say 2-1 as well to Leicester. Well, thankfully, this Make isn't an, an outright... And I write 2-1 here because the history's going 1-1. Leicester have only won once in the last six, and which was coincidentally the last game they played, which was 1-0 to Leicester. So we could be looking at a draw here. Right, finally, we're on to one of the big boys. It's one of the biggest and more than likely the uh, biggest captain choice of the this particular uh, game week, it's Manchester City versus Brighton. Uh, Jason, your uh, your score prediction for this game? Five 0 with Sterling, KDB, and Aguero being involved heavily in the points. Five. Poor Ryan, don't own Ryan this game week. Five <laughs> nil. Play button. Get play him button. out. Play yeah. Play <laughs> <button>. <laughs> 
It's better than a minus. <laughs> I've I've gone one less. I've gone four. J and O. You know what? Because it's the way this season's been going. Four one. Because yeah. no one seems to be able to keep a clean sheet. <laughs> Unless you're Everton, of course. Yes. <laughs> Although, as soon as I bring in an Everton defender, two goals conceded. <laughs> You've come here for the best advice. And I brought in Digne for no points. <laughs> hey, he scored the other night. Don't worry about it. <laughs> and I I'm see not playing Sun like Dream Team where that would have counted, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, unfortunately, we're all optimistic thinking City are going to destroy Brighton. Well, the history isn't suggesting that at all. The history is only going to go 2-0. There's been three clean sheets in this fixture, but Man City have only scored more than twi- two on two occasions against Brighton in the last There's six. There's a 12-0 in the chat. Yeah, I see that. <laughs> <laughs> so, more importantly, moving on to the history regarding the popular captain picks. So I've gone with Sterling Aguero, Kevin De Bruyne from this particular game. Sterling has started twice and has made one substitute appearance and has only got a goal and an assist. Kevin De Bruyne, he's made three starts and only one assist. Aguero, however, three starts three goals so if you have jumped on the Aguero um, train then uh, you may be wise to captain him um, I, yeah I'd love to have Aguero in my team I lo- I, yeah. it's, it's just the whole Sterling and Aguero can't fit them both in my team and um, yeah if, if, if you own Kane obviously you're probably going to stick with Kane but um, I know people have transferred you know Aguero in for Kane or Aubameyang and I, you know, I can <laughs> see it paying off I really can yeah so can I, so can I. Uh, moving on to what will possibly be one of the more poorer games of this particular game week. Uh, maybe worse than Crystal Palace versus Aston Villa. You never know, but it's Newcastle versus Watford. Uh, Jason? I've got this game down to be a one all. Um, one all? Joe Linton and Delafeu. Despite go. Watford's really poor... Delefeu, yeah. Yeah. If, if Let... you're right, I'm very happy. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's got to return sometime, Jane. Um, no, I just think New. Yeah, I, mean, I think it's going to cancel each other out. To be honest with you, two poor teams. Um, yeah, one all. I think, despite uh, Newcastle going out of the Carabao Cup, all albeit due to penalties, I think Newcastle are going to win. I think it's. I've done a lot of two ones this uh, this prediction this these predictions, and I'm going to go two one again to Newcastle. I just think Watford. It's. Now seven games without a win in the Premier League. They've lost, sorry, seven in a row. Yeah, they won the other night 3-0, but Carabao Cup, it doesn't really count, I don't think. So, yeah, I'm going to go 2-1 victory to Newcastle or JNO. I'm going to go 1-0 victory to Newcastle. Oh, another 1-0. I nil. think they're going to be the team for clean sheets. I've, that's not long term, just like two or three weeks. Yeah. Then, yeah. yeah. Well, the history is going to go 2-0 to Watford. Uh, Watford have actually won four out of the last six fixtures versus Newcastle and uh, they've had two clean sheets both away so both at uh, St James's Park so maybe Watford could turn their spirits around right then Jane you're a West Ham fan yeah West Ham follower follower I, su- okay. I support AFC Wimbledon right okay my wife supports West, West Ham, Ham. Right, okay. so yeah it lets so... me watch football on TV so <laughs> I'm going to follow West Ham yeah. <laughs> Well, it's on to West Ham versus Norwich and um, a lot of people in chat are saying Pookie for captaincy. And you know what? Based on the history between the big hitters against the respective clubs they're playing, I am I am genuinely tempted by the Pookie train. We've got, I don't know if you're aware or not, Jano, but we've got someone, a very close friend of ours, uh, Cy <laughs> Bellamy. He's 16th in the overall rankings and thanks to Pookie captain the other week, actually, for his hat-trick. And I honestly can see Pookie getting two goals versus West Ham. Um, I'm going 3-2 to Norwich. Jason? (laughs) I'm not going to go 9-0 like Matt D says in chat. But um, to be honest with you, I've written down... uh, Where is it? Yeah, I've gone gone with a 3-2 with Pookie getting two goals or... Even another hat trick. Three two to, yeah. to Norwich as well. Yeah, three two to Norwich, and um, with Lanzini and Haller getting some returns. Yeah, yeah. Uh, straight to you, Jay. I know your thoughts on this game. Well, I definitely feel like the defensive side of things is going to pretty much be a no go. Um, I would 
go 2-2. I don't think it's going to have as many goals as everyone else is saying, but I do believe if you have Harder or Pukki, well done. There's going to be goals in this game. There has to be. <laughs> Think, uh, do you think Halar moving forward is going to be a really good pick? I need to see more myself. I think the signs are there. But if you compare it to, say, your Pookie and your Barnes, I think they've shown more in the first three game weeks. To be fair, Halar had Man City, and then he didn't play in the second game week. So it's not like he had as much opportunity as the other two. But right now, Pookie just looks like the one. Oh, and if you yeah. can't score against West Ham, then I can't suddenly believe, the train will be derailed. I can't believe it. Like, we were talking about in pre-season. We're like, yeah, well, it's the fixtures. They're not looking too good. So we were like, oh, it's a shame because we we're really thinking of jumping on the... P-. And like, it just Pookie just proves that he can score against anybody. And he doesn't even need that many chances to score either. He can. He's such. He's got such a great eye for goal, hasn't he? He really has. Yeah, he it's, just looks like that sort of goal yeah, scorer. Yeah, he's just... He's, 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 yeah, just I still don't godsend. have him in my side. Yeah, I know you were talking about getting him in. Oh yeah, he'll, he'll be in. Like he has to come in for West <laughs> Ham. Going. Yeah. As much as I follow West Ham, if I see West Ham as an opponent for one of my players, I'm quite happy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, the history is going to go two-one to West Ham. Although the last two games have gone the way of what J and O's thinking. He's thinking a two-two. Uh, Norwich have won only one in the last six. Where. West Ham got three victories, so we're looking at maybe possibly a West Ham victory there. Anyway, moving on to my lads, Burnley. Mm-hmm. Um, I did call it on the stream yesterday or the day before. I can't remember when I streamed, but um, it was yesterday morning. I did say that we'll be knocked out of the Carabao Cup by uh, Sunderland. I said that uh, it will probably end a draw and then we'll lose on penalties. It was a lot worse than that. It ended 3-1, as you would have seen mm-hmm. Um I'm not disgusted by it because it's the standard. Uh, I think that's. I think I read that's the fifth time out of the last six that Dyche has been in charge um, for the Carabao Cup. We've been knocked out in the first round. We've been knocked out by teams like Accrington Stanley. There was another team really pathetic that we were knocked out by. It's just awful. It's, it's just disgusting, really. But anyway, it's not going to have any... If, even if we won last night, it would have had no bearing on this particular game whatsoever because the, the two teams are completely different regarding what we would be playing. So last night was complete makeshift 11 and then on a Saturday evening, it's going to be our full strength and it's going to make no difference. And I'm going to go with a, a 3-1 victory to Liverpool. Jason? I'm going to go... With, I, don't, I think it's not going to be that many goals for Liverpool. I think Burnley will defend well and I think they'll be just edging... Um, Burnley, I think it's going to be 2-1 uh, with, with the likes of Salamane probably getting in on the action for Mino, perhaps. Um, could it be the time for Wood to score for Burnley instead of Barnes mm. and upset a lot of Barnes owners? And I know a lot of people transferred Barnes in this game week and Pope, the head of Liverpool away. Sorry, uh, Liverpool at home, should say. Um, J&O? I, I agree with you, 2-1. I think it's going to be 2-1. I think Burnley will defend well. I think now that they don't have Europa League, you're starting to see the team we saw before they actually qualified for the Europa League. So yes. I think 2-1. Um, just I hope either Trent gets an assist or Sully gets a goal. Mm. Well, the, the history is going 3-1. The, la- the last, this is a really weird statistic. Um, so the last two games between us has uh, produced 10 goals, 7 but the four prior titles, five each. So it does suggest that um, since Klopp's taken over, really, that uh, he, he does really well, whereas prior to that, it's been very, very tight indeed. Uh, moving on to Sunday's kickoffs, it's uh, Everton versus Wolves. Uh, Jason, your thoughts on this game? Yeah, I'm going to go with a Everton win. I'm going to go with 1-0 to Everton. Um, I know there's going to be a few right, raised eyebrows. I think Wolves are going to struggle. I think they'll be fatigued from tonight's game. Um, possibly, yeah, I think that could be even time for Sigurdsson to show his worth and even Moise Keane um, to get on the score sheet. <clears throat> well, uh, Wolves are playing tonight. Uh, they're winning 2-1 and uh, <laughs> Den Donker has scored, would you believe? I've, I've just so, uh, uh, yeah, read in chat. Yeah, Wolves have uh, gone through now. It's pretty obvious they've they've gone through into the uh, the Europa League group stages. So well done to them. 
I hope Everton batter them after last week. <laughs> I, I just hope that it's like four five nil, but I don't think it's going to happen. I've, I've joked with this before, but I don't think Wolves are ever going to win or lose a game. They're just going to draw every single game. So I'm going one one. Jano. Yeah, I'd go one one as well. I'm <laughs> I'm hopeful of potential clean sheets there. I think yeah. Wolves are. I, I assumed Wolves wouldn't suffer from the Europa League syndrome, but it seems like they are. And all the players you want to score are scoring in the Europa League. So, mm. yeah, I think it's uh, time to get off of Wolves. And I think Everton still look a bit toothless, although they weren't too bad in the Carabao Cup. Uh, I'd go 1 1. Yeah, that they agree with the history. Yeah. Although uh, in the last three, Wolves are actually unbeaten versus. Uh, Versus Everton, two draws and one win there. Um, now, finally, the final game of the uh, weekend before we head off into the international break is Arsenal versus Tottenham. Uh, Jason, your thoughts on this game? I'm going to go with goals in this game. Um, I think um, there's going to be good returns for all but owners. Aubameyang to get a goal or two. Sabayas, I think, could be a good pick in this game. Pepe as well. And I think that um, I think Spurs are going to just edge it. I'm going to go three two to Spurs um, with Kane wow. getting a return, wow. Son as well showing his worth. Uh, the return of Son and um, could even be a bit of a bandwagon to get him in. Uh, I know a lot of people are, can't afford to get Son in, and the old idea of bringing Son in for game week three didn't kind of pay off. Um, so yeah, three two Spurs. Wow, I mean, I'm I'm going two one to Arsenal. I just think that at yeah. the moment there's just something about Tottenham that isn't right. And I heard uh, it's probably a load of nonsense, but apparently, according to Adrian Durham's sources, there are rumours suggesting that no matter what the result is, this particular game week, uh, Maurizio Pochettino is uh, is going to be leaving. Apparently, but again, yeah. I think it's a load of nonsense. What so leaving is in? He's deciding to leave, or he gets fired. As in he's decided to leave because oh, okay. he's just so frustrated with what's going on at Tottenham at the moment regarding uh, various players not being brought and uh, the, the things like the Eris, Ericsson deal still not um, going through and stuff. So I think it's just he's just very frustrated about how they're being unsettled. But again, I think it's just a load of nonsense personally. But I just think that I think Tottenham are there for the taking. Apparently they were atrocious um, last week. Their form, according to James from Planet FPL... He said that, what is it, they've lost 11 out of 21 fixtures since the turn of the year or something. I can't remember now, but it was... And in other words, that their form is suggesting they should be 12th in the table rather than ending up third or whatever. But uh, either way, I think Arsenal are going to just edge past Tottenham at 2-1. What are your thoughts, Jana? I think this is potentially the most difficult uh, yeah. game to predict because yeah. I think, yes... Spurs, there's something wrong there. They don't seem like a harmonious squad. And that usually is one of their strengths, is they seem a harmonious squad. Um, because mm-hmm. of the fact that there's not as much rotation there as there is potentially at other clubs. But Arsenal's tactics against Liverpool were just so bad yeah. that I'm like, who knows how it will go. I would go maybe Arsenal. Maybe 2-3-1. Just because I'm Three. worried about... Yeah. I'll go to one. But I could see it going the other way quite easily. Mm. But I just feel like... Yeah, it could go anyway. But I'm going to one. <clears throat> well, the history's going 2-0 to Tottenham. There's been, in the last six, four clean sheets. Uh, three of which have gone to Tottenham. Um, yeah, so Tottenham are victory there two 0 Can I, just just one question before we move on to our own uh, team selections ahead of uh, game week four? How much do you pay attention to your own predictions when it comes to um, choosing your own uh, team, Jana? None at all. <laughs> I literally, when I think about my team, I don't think about the end result unless I'm looking at clean sheets. Mm. If I'm actually looking at the midfield and the attack, it's mainly can they score goals? Do they have the ability to score goals even against the bigger sides? So, for instance, to me, Barnes, yes, it's not the greatest fixture for Barnes, Ashley, but I think still potential for him to pop up with one. Um, So, and Pookie, I was hoping, I was hopeful Chelsea might keep him out. Didn't happen. But that is generally how I look at it. Is the player the kind of player that's on form Mm. enough that he could get returns? 
defense is a different matter, then you kind of look at the predictions. But again, I always want a defender that could pop up with attacking returns as well. So again, it doesn't really matter if they do not keep a clean sheet because if they're a Trent Alexander Arnold, they get an assist and everything's okay. Still got some points. I didn't actually mention the history for Salah and Mane versus Liverpool because I think they're two viable captaincy options versus uh, Burnley. Um, Salah has uh, started twice and had made one sub appearance. He's only got one goal. Uh, whereas Mane, on the other hand, has uh, started three times and has got three goals. So to remind everybody the history for the more popular captaincy picks ahead of game week four, we've got Sterling, two starts, one sub appearance. He's got one goal, one assist. Aguero, three starts, three goals. Kevin De Bruyne, three starts, just the one assist. Uh, just repeating again, Salah, two starts, one sub appearance, equaling just one goal. And then Mane starting three times and getting three goals mm. versus Burnley. Which beautifully, Jason, links us into our four processes for our team selection ahead of I game just, week four. I just realised, J&O, um, my friend, are you, are you on our Discord? Yes. You are. Could you, Would you like me to could, post my team on there? Could, could you put it in the rate my team for me? Yes. That'll be <laughs> excellent. We'll, um, we'll start off with, with J&O. Uh, as he's the guest tonight, and we'll, um, we'll absolutely. Uh, Wait, you ask <laughs> start with me, but I'm putting my team in there, so maybe start with someone else, and then all oh, right, my okay. team will be in. No worries. Okay, so I'll I'll just put just go through my team very quickly. So my team is pretty straightforward. I've already kind of just divulged my transfer. Um, let's bring it up now on the screen. You guys should all be able to see it. It's set, ready for game week four. I've got Heaton in goal away at Crystal Palace. I'm very um, hopeful that he can get some saves and a clean sheet in that game. Uh, Lucas Dina, um, I think at home to Wolves, has got great attacking potential and a bonus of a good clean sheet. Um, we've got Van Dijk away at Burnley. Um, we all know what Van Dijk can do, get attacking returns and um, bonus point magnet. Zinchenko at home to Brighton. JNO's, you know, thrown at the, the likability to... Um, the, the one odd gold conceded. I'm hoping not. I hope Sinchenko can uh, get me that. Get me that. Let's hope this week is the week that the defenders re return the points because um, last week was dreadful. And Wan Bissaka, I'm holding hope. I'm holding the faith in the mighty Wan. I'm thinking United can hold out Southampton away. I think all these naysayers can can you know be negative elsewhere because uh, this is this is it now. This is the day that United get the clean sheet. Um, I can't believe I'm saying that. Um, De Bruyne at home to Brighton, I think, has got great potential to get returns. We've got Salah at way at Burnley. Again, great, great, great potential. I know the history isn't always, you know, it hasn't really got much there, but um, I think Salah can score uh, in that game quite easily. We've got Sterling, which is my captaincy pick. Um, I think a lot of people are going to go with Sterling. We've got Ceballos home to Tottenham. Again, with, with Man City guys, if you've got Aguero in, I think that's an absolute beautiful option. I think there's no limit on what sort of goals um, Man City can score against any given team. Uh, Ceballos, again, like I said, um, home to Tottenham. Um, I love... I love I think this guy could be another bargain. I really do. He kind of got all the ingredients to make the, the team tick, provide those key passes and get involved in the attacking plays. Um, and obviously with, with the likes of Pepe um, you know, and Aubameyang in front of him, I think it's going to be great. Oh my God, we've got a super chat. Where's the ice cream tune? Um, I don't know if I've got any more ice creams, but I can certainly play the ice cream tune. Bear with me. <laughs> Yes, the, the good old ice cream. <laughs> You've got to eat an ice cream as well, Jason, because that's what makes it even more funnier. Um, brilliant. But yeah, <laughs> to finish off, I've got Rashford away at Southampton, which I think is going to be a great differential. I think uh, he can definitely get on the scoring, um, especially now Marshall's unfortunately been ruled out. And uh, I don't even need to talk about Pookie. We all know what Pookie can do uh, away at West Ham. So that's my team. So, uh, oh, JNO, uh, have you posted? Yes, you have posted your team. JNO in the nose posted his team. I've got it up on screen now. Um, brought back, I've got to open this ice cream. Go, go for it, JNO. Obviously, you've posted the team that was last week, but I'm assuming you're virtually sticking with the same team as for this week. So, again? JNO, that is. 
Is he there? Oh no, Jay, no, he's there. Ah, he's my moving his mic. Oh so no, no worries, no worries. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was like, you guys, you guys don't want to hear my daughter screaming, so I muted and then obviously forgot to put it back on. Uh, yeah, I, I accidentally posted the team with my points, but there you go. You can see my points from last game week. Um, that would be the starting lineup without transfers because I am a stickler for my own rules and uh, I don't like to transfer early, especially if there's game uh, games in the middle of the week. So right now it's looking like Pope uh, starting goal against Liverpool, of course. Not that sure about what will happen there. Uh, but for me, a 4.5 million keeper is a season-long put them in, forget about it, unless you see something uh, 100% better. So if someone like Ryan just starts tearing it up and making loads of saves and getting clean sheets, yeah, I would swap. But for now, Pope's my goalkeeper of choice. Uh, we've got Sinchenko, Alexander-Arnold and Digne in defence. Just they're your attacking fullbacks that could get you points. Uh, if the clean sheets aren't there, then they could make up for it in that way. In midfield, I've gone for De Bruyne and Sterling. I started off with a triple on Liverpool. I now think Man City is the triple to go with a yeah. uh, season long. Um, just Aguero is too difficult to get. So De Bruyne, Sterling, Zinchenko for now. Uh, I still think, and I could be wrong, but I still think Sterling will score more points than Aguero season long. Uh, Perez needs to go. Just uh, pa- Apparently in the Carabao Cup, he was dreadful. <laughs> So he's just not shown anything. Yeah. Like I was so hopeful he'd be the punt that worked, and yeah, yeah there were so many better options to take. Uh, Sala again, hopeful for something against Burnley, but I still think Burnley could potentially put in a good defensive performance. Barnes just seems to score no matter what, so hopeful there. And then it's Delafay and Jota, both worries for me, but Delafay is just showing better underlying stats and has West Ham. So the transfers most likely to happen are Jota and Perez out. Maybe for a double Norwich move of Cantwell and uh, Pukki. Because I want Pukki. Um, I think Cantwell is a better option than Dundonka. Really? Um, But I'm just not sure if I can make the move to Mount He scored tonight. He scored tonight? (laughs) (laughs) He scored tonight, yeah. (laughs) He's one of those that, yeah, 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 score when I don't need to. Yeah, I know. Same as Jota. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) yeah, I just feel like Cantwell's place isn't at risk at all. And I think then Donker looks like he can be rotated with Europa League. So I'm hoping by keeping Delefeu for at least one more game week, I may finally see that return from him. But yeah, that's probably the move I'm going to make. But Mount is definitely in the equation as well. And Mount will probably be a move I make the next game week, as long as he doesn't get injured. Of, of course, of course, Jen, everybody's going to be screaming at their TV. Tell us your captain. Come on. Who's Sterling. Your captain Sterling. Be? Sterling. What I've done is I've swapped, and I've always swapped to the one that doesn't score the most points. So I'm thinking if I stick on Sterling this time, the points should be with Sterling. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> well, um, me, on the other hand, I'm, uh, I'm going a bit different for once. Have you posted your team in the Discord? No, I haven't. No, I'll uh, I'll do that right now. Go so on, basically, yeah. <laughs> J- people... Jno. By the way, Jno. While while Steve O's doing that, if you could join the waiting room, I'll pull you into the live, um, to the live um channel in Discord. So when we have call-ins, you can hear the guys that are calling in. So if you just jump into the waiting room, I'll drink. I'll drag you into the on-air section. All you need to do is turn me and Steve O down. Otherwise, you'll hear an echo. All right. And, okay, and Jason, cool. do you want to um, advertise the the poll that you put up in the Discord regarding the the, um, the uh, community team? Yeah, absolutely. So I've put two polls up. I've two polls up in the Discord. First poll is the what player would you like to transfer out of the community team? Um, out of Marshall, Perez, Wilson, Wambasaka, or other? Currently, um, an overwhelming amount amount of people are after Perez's head. They want him gone. So it looks like Perez will be gone from the community team at the moment. Um, and also then we've got the what player would you like to transfer in to the community team? And the options were Mount, Abraham, McGinn, Lanzini, Trossard, Dung- Douglas Louise or other. And um, again, we've, wow, we've got a bit of a close one actually between Mason Mount with 21 votes and Lanzini 
with 17. We're just seeing, we've got a few more votes for Mason Mount, actually, in the uh, as, as we're bringing attention to the poll. So if you haven't already voted, please vote in the Discord. Um, we'll, we'll take the data from today and tomorrow and use it ahead of uh, the game week. Absolutely. I've just posted my team up in the Rate My Team, Jason, and everybody's ears, eyes, whatever, will prick up when I, uh, well, when I show you it, basically. So we're going with Nick Pope in goal. I'm going with a 4-5-1 formation. You may be thinking 4 5 1, but you've got Ooh. two strikers. Mm hmm. Exactly. Barnes on the so bench. Van Dijk, yeah. Van Dyke, Zinchenko, Dina, Gilbert. And then I'm going with the five man midfield of Mount, Salah, De Bruyne, Sterling, Sabellos, and no Pookie way. up front. And no um, way you keep it. Benching, Is that the armband? Benching Barnes. Yeah, the armband on De Bruyne for now. Yeah. For now. For but now. I'm probably going to change. You'll change it. There's no way you're keeping it. No way you're keeping it. I don't believe that for a minute. I may, may actually put it on Pookie. Because I think he's got an easier fixture. I I don't know why. Pookie over De Bruyne. Go on, Steve-O. Go on. I, I I asked Jaina about does he look into predictions and everything. He categorically basically said no. Whereas I do. I really do look into the predictions that I go with. I go with um, the history as well. And the history is suggesting to me that um, Man City are going to have a tougher game than what we all think. Um, It looks like there's going to be goals galore at West Ham's ground. Pookie is in the form of his life. He's just a freak of nature at the moment. He seems to be scoring for fun. Um, I've been hearing a lot from West Ham fans saying that Pookie is just going to tear it up, and there's just something about doing terrible. I, if he yeah. can't score against us, I really think it might have been a flash in the pan. Oh, yeah. we, I, I, I'm confident he will score, but I just think Man City have just got the the ability to score six, seven goals at home to Brighton. I really do. Just, I think. Well, we would we would have all said that over the last. Okay, admittedly, the sixth fixture was back in 2009, but the last five have been either in the FA Cup or in the Premier League. And they've all, like I said, only only twice they've scored more than two goals against Brighton. That, to me, says a lot. The history for both Sterling, Aguero and Kevin De Bruyne, well, barring Aguero, but certainly for De Bruyne and Sterling is is just rubbish. Um. Salah and Mane. There you go, Steve. You've got to go with Pookie then. And <laughs> to be fair, I've seen it in the chat, and I brought in Digne, and he did absolutely nothing. Bringing in uh, Pookie. Yeah. Just I was thinking you the all. Same. Um, I just thought that in my head, but I thought I'd keep it to myself. But um, <laughs> I'm just thinking we're doing Elite FPL Soccer Saturday, and I'm thinking to myself, why not have a captain playing? I mean, okay, admittedly, Man City are playing during three o'clock kicks as well, but I just think that there's just something about Pookie and West Ham, and I might do it. I'll have to do a bit more looking into it. And don't get me wrong. Come on, I'm we need you to com- we need you to commit stuff. right now. We need you to commit. <laughs> well, somebody <laughs> chat a minute ago saying you ain't got the balls to do it. Well, that's the thing. I, I'm like you said. I'm quite a safe manager, and to be honest with you, I go with my gut most of the time. My gut instantly went on De Bruyne, and it was Key Boy on the morning show breakfast show yesterday, where he just said that if you take the captaincy off of De Bruyne and stick it on Sterling, and De Bruyne goes nuts versus because his his home record, De Bruyne, is always seems to be double digit scores. We've only got and, a few dif- like three differentials between us, Steve. It's going to be a captaincy pick that is going to decide. But again, you're again. The, 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 I, I couldn't care less what you do yeah, because you're yeah, so you far. Say it, you say it. So the, well, the not teams that far around me. Not that far out of you. The, the teams Why around me. Why are your ranks, by the way? Um, I'm two hundred and eighty-nine thousand, and Jason's ten thousand. Ten thousand. Yeah. Listen to these guys. Then wait for me to catch up before you listen to me. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Steve-O, shot, shot, shot. FPL Boone is saying take a, you've got to take a shot, apparently. Uh, I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm eating ice cream. I can't even speak. I mean, it's a super chat as well. If you're not yeah. going to do, you've got to do a shot, shot, mate. Shot. You've got to do Come a shot. I'll, uh, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll just drink it from the bottle. I've got to be up at flame five to three in the morning. But, uh, I'll tell you what. It's a nightcap. Just, uh, it's a nightcap.
Yuck. Oh. There you go. <laughs> Don't get any ideas now. That's a one-off. <laughs> that is a one-off. Right, goodness. anyway. <laughs> anyway, yes. No, I'm smashed. I'll put it on, I'll put it on Sabellos. <laughs> but um, I, I, <laughs> the reason why I'm, I'm mentioning Barnes is because Barnes' history versus Liverpool is um, he's done rubbish. He's done absolutely nothing versus uh, Liverpool. So, like I said, I'm probably going to stick it on Sterling for safety. But, yeah, those three there, De Bruyne, Sterling and Pukki, it's oh, it's tough. It's a very, very tough um, tough decision, to be honest with you. But uh, I really think I'm going to be sticking with this formation, though, 4-5-1. I think that uh, Gilbert... Zinchenko have got a very, very high chance of keeping a clean sheet, especially Gilbert. I mean, he scored last night as well, or the other night, um, which is good. Apparently, he is looking absolutely fantastic. Bloody hell, uh, Volker's disgusted. But <laughs> um, <laughs> I think I've kind of regretted the Mason Mount move. Um, in fact, we'll ask j and in a second, but I kind of think... I wish I went with Lanzini now. I was brought up in the chat yesterday. But, but, no. but Jay, you know, your thoughts on um, uh, Lanzini? I'm going to get some water because that vodka has just gone down the wrong way. <laughs> I mean, Gino, I'm, I'm really hopeful for Lanzini and I'm hopeful for that West Ham side in general. My worry is, and I, I still think Lanzini is probably the most nailed on, is they have so many players that can play behind Harla that I'm worried if there'll be rotation issues with Lanzini. Um, I just, I find it difficult to trust the West Ham player because it's probably been since Arnautovic and Payet, outside of those two, who has really returned to a level that we could consider them in FPL. A lot of people fell in the Felipe Anderson trap last year, didn't they? Yes, like don't get me wrong, I still feel like Felipe Anderson could turn into a great Premier League player, but I just feel like Mount. There's something about Mount that feels more secure to me. I feel like Lampard just looks at Mount as maybe a younger version of himself, and he knows the way Lampard wants the team to play already because, of course, he played for him last season. I just have a good feeling about Mount, and I don't yet just, have that. Um... With- any Sorry, just excuse me for two minutes. My little one's crying. I'll be right back. All right. <laughs> there we are. Jay and with his screaming baby. We've got <laughs> Jason with a screaming baby. We've one got second. A, a drunken Steve O. Um... <laughs> we're all leaving you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, go for it, Jay and You were saying. <clears throat> oh, Jay and O's gone as well. <laughs> there we go. Alive. Don't worry. Didn't oh, leave you're too back, long. <laughs> well, oh, you're back. Oh. I just thought, you know, for the super chat. The wife has brought that in. So there you go. Hey! <laughs> Didn't want to leave you on your own. It's pro- it's not as bad as vodka. That's some <laughs> sort of <laughs> rum. That... Captain Pookie together. <laughs> <laughs> that is fantastic. I'll tell you what, um, Jano, while Jason's not here, let's get a caller on. I did say to... Uh, Pegashan Rakesh that we will get him on first time when he's on the air. So um hopefully you got your headphones in. Hopefully uh Pegashan is there, ready to talk. Just um you have got your mic unmuted, you've got your headphones in. So hopefully Pegashan can join us now. Good evening, Pegashan. You're joining myself, Steve O, J and O, and uh, Jason will be back in a minute. Good evening. Pegashan, are you there? <laughs> bit of the back story he was kicking off the other day for us not bring him on and then we <laughs> <laughs> bring him on and he's not there I was worried I was like have I not said something correctly and no, I was no, like damn no, it no, no. here we go then let's go with um, do you know what I haven't heard from FPL Lad for a while so FPL Lad make sure that you've unmuted your mic and we'll bring you live on air now so um, FPL Lad you're live on the Elite FPL Prevo show with myself Jason and special guest Jay and O good evening nope he's gone away <laughs> bring it back in again FPL lad good evening <laughs> FPL lad you're there we can... you're trying to talk yeah I'm here there we go yeah you got me hey. hey yeah we can hear you buddy how's it going Ooh. 
I don't know. I think I think I think he's he's trying to speak, but he's not coming through. FPL lad, can you hear us? He's not there, Jason. No, I think let's, bring on... let's bring on someone else. Let's bring on Tom FPL. Tom FPL. Tom FPL, you're live on air on uh, Game Week Four preview. Can you hear us, Tom? <laughs> wow. Hello, hello, Tom. Can you hear us? Waiting all this time. Uh, okay, Buster Barnes. Let's bring Buster Barnes on. Buster Barnes, you're live on the Game Week Four preview with JNO and myself and Steve O. Can you hear us? Hi guys, can you hear Yay! me? Yay! Finally, there we go. Someone with a working microphone. There you go. Take a shot. Take a swig, Stevo. There you go. Um, I thought it wasn't working last time. Buster Barnes, welcome, uh, welcome. Um, do you want to? Have you got anything to say to J and O? Who's kindly joined us this evening? Um, yeah. Well, I was on J and O's stream the other day actually, and um, he compared. Not Madison to cut him off, but I can't hear him. I don't know if I've oh, got set and set. He, he needs I to can turn see he's talking. Can, have you turned him up? Yeah, he's on 100%. He's Use the volume, not muted. Oh, no. I oh, need to go in your settings and make sure you've got your... Go into the cog, go into the settings cog, and then go to make sure that you've got your um, voice and video, make sure you've got your input and output devices set correctly. Cool. Right. But, yeah, um, we've got your team up now buster barnes we've got um for the guys listening on audio we've got pope in goal um uh, alexander arnold emerson interesting pick in emerson uh, zinchenko salah madison mount sterling with a kick the armband hola or Alair, um puki and rashford um very strong team with a couple of outside picks i like the madison pick i think madison could definitely return at home to bournemouth and emerson is a player that is showing a lot of promise isn't he i think he's due a good return um i think he's high up there on the expected um goals and assists i think of the expected assists um table um jno are you able to hear him now no not yet um speak for us barnes, mr barnes can you can you oh. talk yep i'm speaking speaking <laughs> no i'm assuming oh, you guys no. can hear him yeah we can we can hear him yeah we can hear him i don't know what's happening oh. there <laughs> technical issues <laughs> so uh, but you've um, See, got, blame you, the guest no worry wow <laughs> uh, might yeah just might have to persevere then uh, we'll have to just relay the uh, messages and if you can't if you can't sort it i mean if if your settings I'll are, have a look. I'll, yeah have a little play around <laughs> excellent no worries yeah so um talk about your team game week four is your armband definitely going to be on sterling um yeah i think so i just think that a lot of people are going to have it on Sterling, and I just think the first few weeks you have to be safe with your captaincy options. Like it could really pay off having a differential, but I just think early early on you don't want to like fall really short. So I'm just going to pick the safe option for now. Yeah, that's that sounds good to me. I like you've got a couple of good picks in there. Um, I'm thinking I'm talking Ale. You got Rashford. These are players that can propel you up the league, you know, depending on obviously how they do. Um, obviously, Rashford being sold on mass uh, crazily ahead of uh, the Southampton game. Um, are you confident with your team? Anyone in your team that you're um, unhappy with? Well, um, I'm, I'm not too certain, actually, on um, Man City defence because I'm using my wild card this week and I took Digne out and I'm really regretting it and really want him back in. And I want to keep Arnold and Emerson, so... Zinchenko yeah. could possibly be earmarked then for you. Yeah, because he doesn't... I don't know, City could get clean sheets, but I don't know, Zinchenko doesn't really excite me. And I don't want to spend all the money on the port, so... Mm. Yeah, he could be one that goes. Well, we'll ask... We'll ask JNO. JNO, your thoughts on getting rid of Zinchenko for Dina? <laughs> I feel like that's a move that you're potentially making in case something happens. Because I think Zinchenko is still a good pick uh, overall. But I think there is, of course, the worry that you've got the likes of um, Cancelo around, Mendy coming back from injury. We still have to see how they'll fit into the side. So I, I get the worry with Zinchenko of potentially him being dropped and the reason we've all gone for him is because he looks like a nailed way into that side at the beginning of the season for 5.5. Digne is their left back. I can't see Baines coming back into that side and beating him to that starting spot. So it's a more secure pick if you're looking towards the future. But until I see signs that Zinchenko isn't the starter, 
I would probably still stick with Zinchenko, but I can't argue with having Digne in your side either. So I've got both, and there's a reason for that. I think they're both good picks at the moment. Um, mm. Bart Buster, can you hear JNA by any chance? Um, yeah, it was cutting out a little bit, but I could make out pretty much ninety percent of what you said. Right. Okay. So, so Buster can hear you, JNA. So it must just be a just be an audio. I mean, I've looked at something, and it says to do something with the subsystem legacy audio, but that will close my Discord and then open it. I have to open it back up, so you'll have to invite me back in. Oh, my God. We've had a donation uh, for our Super Chat. Another Acker win rolling in, JNO. You're the man. Hope um, hope to see you on here more often. Um, Matt Brunton with a generous £20 Super Chat. Oh, Matt thank Brunton. You. Absolutely. Thank Cheers, you. mate. Amazing. Um, thank you no, so much. Tell me, support. tell me what your acker is this week. Just yeah. <laughs> What's your thoughts on Man City? Is, Man is, City and Norwich games. <laughs> we need to. We we. I think we need to get Matt Brunton on as well to do some predictions because he seems to be pretty good at um you know choosing these um, choosing the ackers and um, scores and things like that. So Matt uh, needs to teach us all the ways. Um, so yeah, hopefully we can sort out your audio because um, yeah, it'd be great if you can hear the callers. Um, but we will do our best in the meantime to feed for the questions to you, Jano. Um, Buster Barnes, um, you've got to be confident going forward to, to game week four. I mean, I with that team, that's a very strong team, my friend. It really is. I mean, Pope and Goal to Liverpool. That'd be the only player that I wouldn't really expect to return anything in your in your starting eleven there. Um, yeah, I agree. I'm just hoping for maybe maybe one or two save points, but yeah, can't really expect much else. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Is there anything you want to say before we, we get you on? Oh, get get you off air. Um, no, I don't think so. I mean, the only one question I have, and to be honest, it doesn't really make too much of a difference to play for the same team, but just the difference between Haller and Lanzini. Maybe Lanzini would free up some cash for me as well if I chose him instead. So, I don't know what I'm thinking on that one. Instead of who? Just instead of Allah, just because oh, it saves up some money. Yeah, um, Steve-O, your thoughts? No, I think keep Allah. I, I really do think keep Allah. I think that uh, based on... <laughs> I keep mentioning his name, uh, Boa Rice. He was somebody that was part of the, the pre-season quite regularly. And then all of a sudden the season kicked off and I never see him. But uh, Burr Rice was really, really um, enthusiastic about uh, Allaire and what he'll be doing for West Ham. And I think that the fact that he's got two goals already um, and then he's got favourable fixtures, I'd, I'd just stick with him. Yeah, I think you've got Allaire in now. You set your team up pretty much. It's a nice looking team, mate. It really is. Um, you've, you've used those money. You've used that money well. I mean, you haven't got KDB in, admittedly, but you've got great picks that are pretty much diff- differentials to me the likes of madison the likes of rashford who i also own the likes of haller um and emerson i think they're great picks i really do i think you don't need to chop up your team just to bring lanzini in and start to free up funds not at this stage anyway yeah okay yeah fair enough yeah um, i definitely don't want to mess with my team too much close to the deadline because that always calls for a disaster yeah so absolutely I probably yeah. Will keep it. yeah it's a good team it's a good team buster thank really? you so much for coming on yeah, thank you guys. Thank you. For Speak soon, me. Buster. Cheers, buddy. Thank you. Um, we'll bring Jano back in. Uh, Jano, you, you're back in with us now on Discord. Um, let's bring on Chicken Tikka Mo Salah. I was going to say, yeah, 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 yeah. Also known as Charlie Dropping. Bit My Finger. Even he's, dro- he's dropped down to 14th in our mini league. How are you feeling, Charlie, with the, that, this major drop that we've had since being, was it number one? Uh, yeah. A couple of weeks ago, um, yeah, I'm still I'm still feeling positive. It's just uh, Kane last week let me down. If I'd have had it on Ster- Sterling, then it'd have been mm-hmm. fine. But obviously, Spurs were awful. Kane was awful. So yeah, he's gone now. I've got so your, who have you uh, got your team? Kane out for- yeah, oh, I've got his team up. It's it's an interesting one. What's going on with Martial, mate? <laughs> I don't know. Did you do an early transfer? Genius, by the way, it's all sorted. Yeah. Oh, hey. ideal. You can hear him. I'm gonna leave. Um, like even like obviously, like you said earlier, apparently he's not playing. But I've I've, I've heard a load of different things about Martial. I've heard that he's playing, that he's not playing. Uh, well, so I'll just leave him in anyway. Well, I think I'd be I would if I would be putting Lundstrom first sub on my bench if I were you ahead of Kelly that's my advice I don't know it'd be interesting to hear what uh, JNO and Steve-O say I don't think Martial's going to play 
I don't think he's going to feature. But yeah. Um, but yeah, I just keep him in your team just in case. But uh, I just think it's a major doubt. I think he's been ruled out. Um, yeah. So for, I was just going to say for people listening on audio, we've got uh, Matt Ryan in goal, Van Dyke, Dean, Wamba Saka, and uh, Martial, but he won't be playing. Uh, Sterling captain Salah, De Bruyne, McGinn, Puki, and Abraham. So you got rid of Kane for Abraham, and to, to, you brought in Kevin De Bruyne for what was it here? Salah? Is that right? Or am I going? No, no. Pereira. 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 You, you right, stuck oh, with right, Pereira. Okay. You, you stuck with United Pereira for so long. That like, it was yeah. a bit of a risk, wasn't it? Going. I think if you learnt your lesson there with that. Yeah, but I thought. I thought you know he. I don't know why he was dropped, to be honest with you. I thought he played uh, well the first game. Uh, obviously, got an assist, and I thought he was going to play, but... Well, yeah, I, to... I think he'll play now. I think he'll play. Um, yeah, probably, yeah. He probably will, <laughs> probably will play now, obviously, the, the injury to Martial. Um, looking at that team, you know, you're going to have the armband and Sterling, and I probably don't see you changing it. Um, I just want to ask um, J&O, actually, um, what's the thoughts about the uh, the switch to Abraham Kane out, Abraham in, Pereira out, KDB in? Um, I, s- I assume you did that for a minus four, is that right? Yeah. Um, yeah those four. moves, JNO, what's your thoughts? Well, I mean, you definitely can't argue with uh, Pereira out, De Bruyne in. There, there's, <laughs> yeah. We don't need to talk about that. If, if I need to tell you why that's a good move, <laughs> then. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. No. But as far as. Um, Abraham, my issue is still the worry of rotation. Like, do we know when Giroud will play? Do we know when Abraham will play? Is Abraham now the number one choice? I believe he'll play against Sheffield. I think just the way that that game is looking, he will be the starter in that game. I just don't know if season long he will be the starter all season. I hope he will because I think he deserves a shot. Um, But yeah. I just worry because Giroud is so good at bringing the other players in around him that there'll be times in the season where I think Giroud might start. Can I ask you a question? I said about his bench because obviously Martial's not going to feature, so he's going to have a player coming off the bench out of Kelly, Lundstrom and Wickham. Um, it's going to be between Kelly and Lundstrom. He's got Kelly as his first sub. People in chat, I think um, FL Penguin likes the idea of um, Kelly and also someone else I just read a minute ago um, putting Kelly in the starting eleven ahead of Lundstrom. I prefer Lundstrom myself. What about yourself? Um, um. I thought I don't know. It's, I, I'm not. I'm not really too sure who to put first. I, I mean, I'll leave Martial because I've heard other stuff. I've watched that uh, uh, United stand. Uh, he's been saying that Marsh, he thinks Martial will still start. So I'm not sure how bad this injury is. Um, but if he doesn't play, then I'll, I probably will play Kelly because I, I just think... I, I, I mean, Lundstrom, maybe he could get an assist or a goal, but I don't think Sheffield United would be troubling Chelsea too much. And I think Palace have a better chance of maybe... You know, conceding less goals, but maybe yeah, maybe Lundstrom because obviously he plays out of position, so I'm not sure yet. Well, a lot of people in chat are saying go with Kelly, so um, I seem to be the minority. Stevo, who watched uh, thoughts? Yes. What's oh, your, well, yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd, just, I'd go with Lundstrom personally, but yeah. only because proof of form. Yeah, and the fact that Crystal Palace are just terrible at home. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> but. <laughs> So, so yeah, um, Charlie, anything else you want to say before we move on to the next caller? And hello to FPL and Freer in chat as well. It's a pleasure having you with us. Uh, just keep up the, keep up the good work um, and can't wait to see you on the next stream on Saturday. Uh, have you, are you all a watcher of J&O? Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'll watch J&O, yeah. yeah he's- don't worry, you don't have to lie if you're not. It's fine. <laughs> no, I do. No, I do. I do. I'm in your. I'm in your league. Uh, league as well. Oh, okay, um, cool. You're probably I... beating me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I Thank... think I'm on like 113 points. So. Thank you ever so much um, for for joining us, Charlie. And we look forward to speaking to yeah. you again soon. Cheers, Cheers lads. Cheers. Cheers now, Charlie. Cheers. Well, um, so we've got a few other people wanting to come in and talk about their teams. Um, and that's a, that's another casualty of the Marshall the massive Marshall train that came and lots of people jumped on Marshall. Unfortunately, he's going to be out for game week four. Um, a lot of people transferring him back out or having to bench him this week. 
Um, we'll bring on. We'll try FPL lad again. FPL lad, we're going to try you again. Can you hear us? I can hear you. Can you hear me? We can hey. hear you now. There we go. Look, got you. Got you got there we go. There we go. There we go. <laughs> How are you doing, FPL lad? Know. You're right. Yeah, good, mate. How are you? Yeah, good. Thank you very much. Are you set for game week four? Is the question I want to ask you. Uh, no. Okay. Uh, I've got your team. I've got your team that's, here. That's the type of manager I like. I, I've, I've got a hundred percent set. Wild got card. to wait till all the press conferences. Are you on your wild card? I am on my wild card. Oh no wonder you're not sure. Oh. <laughs> there we go. This there is an go. interesting team. Mm. I've gone early. I've gone early. Why do you decide to wild card? Um. I basically realised I was being carried by that four players, so I got rid oh, of the other. Oh, a minute! You're um, you're doing really well in our cash league. You're uh, in the top twenty-five, I think, or something. Yeah. Yeah, there we are. Like you're twenty. You're twentieth. Yeah, two hundred and five points. Nim, you can get on the Discord. The links in disc. Uh, in yeah, chat. you're only yeah, you're only seventeen points off fourth spot. What well, on earth have you decided <laughs> to walk out for? Because. You got a wild card from a point of strength rather than weakness. Why wait for it all to go wrong to then try and correct it? I don't. Right. Okay. Um, it... no, no, let him speak, Jason. Yeah. He's a he is a rival. Let let him speak. <laughs> He's like, this is research. <laughs> 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 Tactics. <Yeah. laughs> go for it, FBI lad. Uh, right. I am. Let me just get this up. Hope. Here we go. Right. I'm. So the team is. The, the people that I've kept are Alexander Arnold, Salah, Sterling, De Bruyne, and Puki. Mm. And I think between them, they got me 205 points. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm struggling to hear you, Jason. I can no, hear Steve, I, no I I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not really talking. I'm just like, <laughs> be, 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 I'm <laughs> right. still shocked. I'm still shocked just, that you've wild carded. still Literally. shocked. Because you're a rival, they've gone silent. They're just I mean, like, they're you, pen and paper are out. What, they're like, okay, this is what he's doing. What, what, <laughs> points, what points are you on at the moment? 205. Keep using your chips, mate. Keep using them chips. It's fine. Just, well, wild card's not a chip. Wild card's not a chip. Oh. I just, there was like, there and was you get another bit, one. It's fine. Yeah. You, well, exactly. Well, the other one don't come into play until the double game weeks, does it? But the, uh, the it, thing is, I wanted I wanted Gil Gilbert. I saw him on Friday night. He looked absolutely immense. Um, and uh, so you wild carded to get him. Oh, in. sorry. <laughs> well, yeah, just just for Gilbert. No, I, I wild carded for him. Um, Cantwell. This, this is the thing, right? Do you know what? I wild carded for Cantwell. How different was your team before you wild carded? That's what I'm interested in seeing now. I um, I just want to post my last week's score and into discord i just well, can you tell me what transfers you've done well uh, what what well, different players, players are, have you got in what different right. players have you got in um dean yeah, come in for wan right because united have kept one clean sheet in 14 games all right and they're even lucky to do that really weren't they against chelsea um keepers oh. changed because i had larice and spurs can't keep clean sheets um it. laporte's in for van dyke because Man City have got an insane run and I can't not have a City defender. Um, Peters and Gilbert, I've, I just think Burnley have been brilliant, as you said earlier, about since they're out of the uh, Europa League. Yeah. Um, Gilbert was bombing forward on Friday night. I like the look of that. Cant- Cantwell was the reason I wildcarded because I was triple Norwich before because I had McGovern and Hanley on my bench. So um, I couldn't get Cantwell. Okay, so other than, so other than the back line, really then, other than the back line, have you changed anyone? You... Yeah. Ooh, oh, the other I've changed, I've got Lanzini and Cantwell in for Dendonka and Perez. Right, okay, okay. And um, Barnes is in for King. Right, I see that. Okay, so you've... I, I, nah. mean, it's an, I mean, to be fair, I think you've improved your team. I do think you've improved yeah. your team. But whether or not yes. the wild card has been timed correctly we'll, we'll only know um over the next few game weeks i think that I, um i think barnes obviously after the liverpool game is he's, he's a great pick to have in the fixtures are great for yeah, burnley yeah. i think lanzini could, again is a great pick i think a lot of people are jumping on him um cantwell we all know have what you he can the, do uh... have, you seen Sorry, so have you seen west ham's opponents coming up how shocking their defenses are 
Mm. Uh, yes. They've lit. Yeah. They're out the ne- they're through the next four games. They're playing like three of the wor- five worst defenses so far. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's... goal, goals, goals, goals. You'd hope. Yeah, definitely. You would definitely hope that. I think that. Um, I think. It's, it's, it's a shock that you've wildcarded, especially from such a strong position. I can see why you've done it. Um, game week, you know, we're, we're heading towards the international break. Do you not think about waiting until the international break before you did that? Or are you kind of thinking the time is now, the, the fixtures are going to start to move into my favour? It's, you know, it's, the, it's the price rises. At the start of the season, the players' the prices price are just all over the place. And I, I was just playing with a wildcard, and then I realised when I had this exact squad as I've got it now, it was yeah. bang on 0.0 in the bank. So any price rise whatsoever, and yeah, I wouldn't be able to do it. Okay. Well, let's hope they do well. Otherwise, those prices can easily go down again. With such a volatile well, community, a uh, volatile uh, market at the moment in terms of price rises. I'm talking Rashford's probably going to be 8.5 very soon. Um, no no Man United players. Get oh, come on. Look, you got Greenwood, you got Greenwood if, in your team. What are you on about? No. If, uh, 4.5 he's in, he's yeah, in yeah. 4.5 that plays um, if my team Palace can beat win at Old Trafford then anyone can I so think. J&O um, I, can you see can you see FPL lads team here what do you think yeah. of him using yeah, his wild card ahead uh, of game week 4 well I definitely don't see any issue with using it from a position of strength um, if you think your team has done particularly well over the three four game weeks and then you go okay I'm not too confident in how it will do moving forward then why wouldn't you wildcard looking at that team to be honest it's pretty much all the players I'd be looking at um, maybe Lanzini for me would be Mount that's pretty much one way I would not go if I was going West Ham I still would lean towards Harla not mm. that I've seen that much from him but I just get the feeling that he may be the one that benefits from all the creativity behind yeah. him um, and then as far as defence, do you need two 4.6 uh, mm. and a 4.4? Like, are you going to play five at the back? I would just say Lundstrom. Like, I know Lundstrom is like someone everyone has, but just like, at that price point, if you're going to have a bench defender, it might as well be Lundstrom. The thing is, I, look, I did look at Lundstrom, but... From 4.4 to 4.2, what what are you actually going to do? Well, with 0.2? I, I suppose I've had him since four, so that might be why I'm coming yeah. from that yeah, perspective. Yeah, yeah. He's gone up now. So, for the sake of having 0.2, one in the of, bank, one of I the few I'd players go. I've got that has gone up. So, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Well, um, any final thoughts, um, FPL lad, before we move uh, on to the next caller? Um, my only final thoughts are, Steve, I get Pookie captain, mate. <laughs> there we go. We need to, we need What's to... your uh... Obviously, you're you're very um, renowned for doing Instagram, and you said uh, uh, when we had you on, when it was that you like to do an article where you choose a differential. Oh. Have you been doing it this year? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. what's your Thanks. differential this week? Well, uh, can I just say, in game week two, with four and a half percent ownership, my differential was Pookie. Okay, brilliant. <laughs> so, uh, how did two, last week go? Shy. Oh, sorry. Rubbish. Rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> Who did you pick? Um, I went for Lamella. Oh, oh. And I just... Because we've ended on Belly and I thought he was going to play and Newcastle were rubbish. Yeah. But apparently I mean, not, not as bad as Spurs. So. Everyone thought that <laughs> Spurs would go and get points there. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone that said, oh, I could see Newcastle putting up a good... De- they're, they're lying. Everyone thought Spurs were going to go over and turn them over. And, yeah. yeah. So who are you thinking this week, uh, FPL lad? Lan- Lanzini. Are you just choosing players that are in your team? Because you had Lamella last week. I did. <laughs> I, I'm back. In, I don't just, you know, I don't just do these things to the community. And I saw, you know, I've got to back myself up as well. I can't just be chucking out random names. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I think it's very brave, very, vo- very bold. But like uh, the, the guys have said, it's a very strong team. It's full of players that people are looking to bring in. So you could definitely be ahead yeah. of the, but, the, the, the masses. Um, so best of luck to you. You're in a very strong position. And I look forward awesome. to hearing Trying. your trials and tribulations come the weekend when it's either all gone <laughs> good for you or it's gone into, it's turned into a disaster. Um, I'm hoping for the latter, of course, as a rival. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Ever so say, much. Have... I'm trying to catch you, Jason. I'm trying to catch you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers, now, I feel that. Appreciate it. 
we we haven't we haven't got long left, everybody. So yeah. anybody that does come live on air, can you just make um, a quick point, and then we'll get J and O to answer it. Me and Jason can kind of go a bit quiet, and we'll get just ask you questions for J and O, just a quick thought process and see what J and O says. So who's up next, Jason? EFC zero four. Um, we'll bring him in. Um, EFC 04, are you there? You're live on the f- Game Week 4 free preview. Hello, EFC, can you hear us? Hello. Hello, um, you're live on air. You're GNO special guest. Um, have you got any questions for him? I've just recently done a wild card. I was looking, looking at it or done. Sorry, you're breaking up there, my friend. Um, can you say that again? Oh, I think gone. we've lost him. I think we lost him. I'll just, I'll, I'll, I'll just, quick, I'll just quickly go over his wild card. So Jano, listen up. It's what well, just, just out of fifteen. What you give this team out of fifteen? So we're going with Tom Heaton in goal, Wamba Saka, Matip, Dina, Sterling, Salah, De Bruyne, Mason Mount, Cantwell, Abraham, Puki, and then a bench of well, Button, Barnes, Siunchu. And Lundstrom, out of 15, how many of them would you take? Look at that bench, jeez. <laughs> you confused my brain there for a minute. I was like, out of 15? Who does yeah. that? What's going on? Um, I mean, out of 15... How many quickly... would you take of that? Probably, I'm looking at 11. That's yeah. including Button. Because yeah. <laughs> I can't not say I would take Button when he literally is my four million pound placeholder goalkeeper that's never going to get onto the scene. But yeah, it's ten if you don't include Button. Um, um, well, I mean, it's, it's a shame that um, we tried to, to, um, to get him on, but it seems that uh, EFC's mic just was cracking, um, cutting out. So we, I know we've got FPL Boona in with us. Um, Boona, you've got yourself muted at the moment. You've been waiting to speak, I'm sure. Welcome on air. We've got J&O in the house with us. Have you got anything to ask j and o? o? Yeah, yeah, I do. Hi, j and um, Yeah, good pal, thanks. Um, really quick question. Lanzini or Anderson and why? Oh, um, I mean, my gut would straight away go towards Lanzini, but I think that could be a... Uh, factor from last year where he just disappointed so many of us Anderson okay. if I actually I mean, looked at a player that I thought could score world class goals I think Anderson's probably more of a goal scorer if he's on form than mm. Lanzini is but I think Lanzini's just a bit more of a consistent player and I think Anderson needs that confidence so I'd probably still go Lanzini mm. which is what most people are doing Yeah, perfect Brilliant. cheers buddy thank you uh, Let's bring on FPL Penguin, uh, Jason. Yeah, FPL Penguin, big on the old uh, Instagram world. I'm not, I'm not that good on Instagram, but this guy is. Um, FPL Penguin, you're live on uh, the Game Week Four Preview Show with J and O, special guest. Have you got anything to ask? The man hey, what's going on, guys? How are you? Yeah, good, thank you. Yeah, How we're good. Uh, have we got anything to ask? Uh, don't know. Are you confident about this game week? Uh, I think whenever I'm confident, that's a bad sign because it usually means I don't get many points. So um, <laughs> <laughs> I just say, I think I'm looking at my side. I don't think it's too far off what other people have. My worry is the fact that because it's not too far off what other people will have, I need exact players to score points to make up ground. But I still have my wild card, so fingers crossed. I'll whenever ask- I do play that, that will make a difference. I'll ask you a quick uh, question, Penguin. Are you confident for Marne ahead of the Burnley game? Because his history versus Burnley, you know, three starts, three goals, uh, looks pretty good for captaincy, I would have thought. So, who did you say it? So, you kind of cut off a bit. Marne. So, Marne, Marne uh, for captaincy. In your uh, team. Marne, yeah, I think that's um, a good pick. I've got Marne, but I am put him as my captain. I put my team and uh, rate my team. Yeah, um, that's, what I'm, yeah that's what I'm saying. I'm looking at it. I'm just thinking, and, why not uh, Marne instead I've, I've of Sterling? I've gone for Sterling gone for that mm. uh i just i just not confident with Marnie. you know i said um when i was last on a few nights ago it's either going to be the Salah or Marnie show again but mm. i'm just i just don't feel confident so i've kind of gone for sterling just mm. uh go for it i see you and uh, another manager that's got harry kane in in your team i'm i'm tipping him to score a few goals away at arsenal are you confident uh I'm trying to feel confident about it. Um, 
I know it's a lot unfortunate. Of, a lot, last week, VAR. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he loves scoring against Arsenal and I think he will score a goal or two. I think it's going to be a thriller. I think it's going to have quite a lot of goals in it. Have you done game. your transfer, by the way? Uh, yeah. One free transfer, Lanzini, in for Martial. Okay, yeah, sorry. Ah, good. Nice. Nice. Brilliant. Excellent. Thank you ever so much for, for coming on the show. We're going to get through as many callers as possible. No worries. Um, and, and we look forward to speaking to you um, after game week four's games. Thank you ever so much. Same, lads. Thanks, guys. Cheers, Cheers. Cheers, Cheers buddy. Dude. See ya. Cheers. Bye. Uh, let's get on if my discord doesn't crash let's hope it doesn't crash because it's there we go there we go um we'll bring in well i don't think we've spoken to tg before um he's got his microphone muted let's bring on tg tg live on air on the uh, game week four preview on the elite fpl podcast we've got special guest jno can you hear us you got your microphone muted at the moment buddy if you could just unmute your microphone and three, two, no, unfortunately, TG is not there. Let's go on Elite Guna. Elite Guna, you're live on air on the Game Week 4 preview with JNO, Steve O, and myself. Can you hear me? All these people, I think they just go and make cups of tea or something. They go in the waiting room, they go. <laughs> but no worries. Um, let's bring in um, Anish. Anish T28, you're live on the Game Week 4 preview with myself, Jason, Steve-O and JNO, special guest. Can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you guys. Excellent. Um, first and Hello. foremost, um, have you got a question for JNO? Um, yeah, I guess, who do you think is going to be the highest scorer this Game Week? Good question. I mean, my, my instinct would be to go straight to that Man City game and then it would be Aguero or Sterling. But that just seems a bit boring to me. So I, I wouldn't be against going Pookie just because it's West Ham's defence. It mm. just, it could be, if he plays like he played and finishes some of the chances he's done in previous game weeks, could be a bloodbath. So <laughs> just saying, like, if he scored, like that volley he scored, I'm just thinking if he's on fire, West Ham's the perfect team to be on fire against. You know what will happen. It'll, be, it'll end nil-nil. You just know it. I, 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 no, I can, I've got a vision. I've just had a, like a vision come up. I, I, I can see you on Sunday going, I was talking about Captain in Pookie, but I went with a safe option. I can hear it now in your voice. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, 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 I think I think Puki. I mean, he's just so good. He's looking really good. And West Ham. I mean, they they could be there for the pick, there, there for the takings, you know. And there will be people that will give Puki the armband. Um, some brave souls out there, but I won't be one of them. I haven't got the minerals, I'm afraid. Um, Anish, is your is your team set for game week four? Uh, yeah, I'm pretty much decided on saving a free transfer. Saving. I've already got my game week. I've got my game week five moves planned out already. So. All oh, right. Okay. So planning ahead. Obviously, the international break's just around the corner. Um, what? So, so what? What plan have you got? If you don't mind me asking. Uh, I'm going to take out Kane and Perez for Haller and Pepe. Oh, you're thinking Pepe <laughs> might be? Um, yeah. I mean, Pepe's looking like lively, isn't he? Do you think that Pepe could yeah. get in on the action with like, home to Tottenham? Do you think there's? Gonna, I predict there's I think... goals galore in that game. What price is, is Aubameyang? Twelve million. Yeah. Yes. 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 Yeah, so for two and a half million less, I think he could match or do better if his minutes are guaranteed. No, it's not. Uh, Aubameyang's eleven. Sorry. Yeah, oh, it's right. eleven million. So one point, even for one point five million less, yeah, I think yeah, he could yeah, match yeah. or do better if he gets if he's guaranteed minutes. Excellent. Well, if he scores on Sunday. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm not quite sure what's happening, but we've kind of got a weird screen up on Skype, so hopefully that'll come back in a minute. Um, thank you for coming on, um, Anish. I appreciate Let's it. Get, uh, we're going to get the next caller right now. Apologies. Cheers. Thank yeah. you. So we're trying to get through as many callers as possible because obviously we're, we're, we're mindful of the time. So um, let's bring in Dan Bull, uh, Danny B. Dan Bull, you're live on the Game Week 4 preview. Welcome to the stream, buddy. Can you hear me? I can hear you, mate. How's it going? We have on the, the stream this evening a, sp a very special guest. You will know who it is. It's JNO. Have you got a question for him? <laughs> yeah, JNO. Actually, I wanted to ask you how you got into FPL. What made you get into actually playing FPL? Not, not yeah, not not streaming, but what made you get into FPL? Okay. Yeah. 
Just yeah. a game of yeah, yeah. So I mean, it's been one of those games that I've always kind of played, but not seriously from childhood, because mm. it. My dad used to read the Times newspaper, and they have their own version. And it would often be on holidays. I'd see my dad picking a team, and I'd be like, you know what, I'll give that a go. And we'd both pick teams, and we'd probably forget about it game week three, game week four. The first time I ever played and it went somewhere was the World Cup. Uh, I played Sun Dream Team because a mate of mine set up a league. I was like, okay, you know what? There's some pride between mates here. I want to win this. So I started doing some research instead of just picking a team and going, oh, I'm going to wing it. So I watched games thinking about who would score points. I started looking up stats and I destroyed them. I'd literally destroyed all of my friends and I was like, yeah, this feels good. So next season, we all played the official game. Um, Again, mini league set up. It was a bit more competitive, but again, I won it and I was like, this feeling of winning is fun. Unfortunately... (laughs) It's not continued as much as I'd have liked it to, but I, again, just carried on with it. And then with my YouTube channel, starting up one where I was talking about stuff I was interested in, because I'd had such success in mini leagues against my friends, I was like, you know what? I'm going to start talking about fantasy football. So that's how it went into uh, actual video content. But yeah, I think it was mainly that World Cup. Yeah, Uh, one quick question. Go for it, Danny. Dan? No, all I was saying is I signed up for a 2010 Fantasy World Cup and didn't even bother picking my team. So, <laughs> <laughs> pointless anecdote, but there you go. Um, Dan, no, very, just... very, very quickly, sorry, Dan. I've got your team up in front of me. You've got Marshall in your team. I noticed you got rid of Murray oh, yeah. and you've brought in Wesley. Mm-hmm. Jeez. Yeah. Now you've got the Marshall headache. Who is going to be playing instead of Marshall? I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I was listening in tonight and I just thought for God's sake I only brought Marshall in last game week and I could possibly play Kelly so play four at the back um, but then obviously he's going up against Wesley so that would be a bit <laughs> counterproductive um, I just got, I had to get rid of Jota and Murray and I was like those are the two transfers I need to do but then Obviously, with Marshall ha- having this injury, it makes it more of a headache. I can't take an eight-point hit. That would just be, in terms of catching up in the mini league, that would just be like suicidal. So, what I'm thinking is kind of to sleep on it, and then whether tomorrow to play my wild card, possibly. Oh, um, okay. yeah, yeah, possibly because I don't know. I just need to catch up some points to get in the to get in contention for the top four. So, I mean, what do you guys think about the Wesley pick? Do you think that's a bit like, um, I don't know how to say it, like knee-jerk or falling into a trap? I think I think it's knee-jerk. I think uh, we'll ask Jane in a second, but I, from my point of view, I think it's an absolute waste of space. But uh, that's that, from my own personal experience. Is that, no, is that because you that took him out? And you, Jeez. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That doesn't you sound like a, had, a four-out he opinion. Yeah, him in four. Yeah. Like, <laughs> He had him into I game week been... one and he never did anything for him, so therefore he's a waste of space. No, I just think there are better options. Um, I, I think I'd be investing my money in the likes of Abraham, um, Alaire, um, and I think that, um, you know, the wild card, I've seen, I mean, we've it's had FPL lad hit the wild card button from a very strong position. He had a decent team before, he's wild carded, and he's now got a, a decent team. I think, you mm. know, if, if, with, the, with the Marshall situation, you know, if you're not happy with your team, now isn't a bad time to do it. You could probably free up money as well. And your goalkeepers, you've got Ryan and Pope there. You can free up half a million straight away there. Um, I don't, I'm not a fan of um, rotating goalkeepers. JNO will find out what you think about rotating goalkeepers. I don't do it. Um, how about, what would you do in terms of um, people that rotate goalkeepers? I used to rotate goalkeepers all the way until this season. Really? And yeah, it used to work. Like I had seasons where I would pretty much get it spot on. And I was like, why wouldn't you rotate goalkeepers? You can pick two cheap goalkeepers, the fixtures work mm-hmm. out. And when it works for you, you feel like an absolute genius. But <laughs> yeah, I've had last many year times didn't necessarily. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's in what game, happens in to games last you season. wouldn't ever think, you know. Um, yeah. The thing is, I look at goalkeepers at the end of the season and I'm like, okay. These 4.5s got the points. These ones didn't really. Yes, if I'd managed to get the calls right, 
it could have been more points, but I've been I've become a fan this season of trying to limit or minimize the amount of decisions I have to make. So I don't want to have to spend some of my time going, which goalkeeper do I play this game week? Because mm. that just seems like I'm wasting my uh, time when I could be looking at other things I could do that would probably benefit my team more. No, definitely. And what do you think of Dan's decision to possibly wildcard after he slept on it with the team that he's currently got with the headache? Oh. With Obviously, taking a minus four already and he's got Marshall that's not going to be playing so he's going to have to choose between Kelly and Denonka. Do you think a wild card is a little bit extreme or do you think that looking at his team he could benefit from it? Well, I mean, I'm one of the guys that hasn't wild carded despite the fact that I didn't have the best start purely because the way I looked at it my team wasn't too far away from the team I would want at any point and this is a game where we try to predict what happens. We try to predict who gets the most points. But there can always be a game week that just completely blows everything out of, the work, uh, out of the works. And one of those players you were thinking of getting out on a minus four or a minus eight does actually get points. So for me, if I really think it's to get the team I want season long and I need to do it quicker, I will take some minuses. But unless I'm looking at maybe a minus 12, if I think overall the points will come in because of the minuses i will take a minus eight and not wild card just because i think potentially who knows what could happen in one game week and suddenly everyone could have four or five players that everyone has suddenly all injured everyone is panicking taking minuses and i've got my wild card in my pocket but that being said i used to be a proponent of an early wild card as well so i like to play it by ear now have a sleep on it dan yeah. yeah, I think I'm gonna. Need I think to. your team looks okay. I don't. I don't think you need to use a wild card yet. Okay, cheers, buddy. <laughs> Thank you ever so much. Can we Dan. get um, the fi- the final caller being Pegashin? Uh, Jason, he said he's ready to come on air. Let's find out. He's only got a few minutes, but Pegasian, um, can you hear us? Yeah. Yeah, you just wanna just. just... Mm, I can hear feedback. Have you got us coming through your speakers? Can you just turn us down a little bit? Yeah, just turn us down so we don't hear the echo. That's great. Um, Peg Asian. Yeah, you've really quiet, yeah, my friend. You've really quiet, my friend. I don't think we're going to be able to talk with you right now because we're getting feedback, Peg Asian. Sorry about that. Um, we'll brew the. We'll make the final caller. Um, Sej M84, Sej M84, you're the final call on tonight's show. You're live on the Game Week 4 preview. Can you hear us? I'm big. Can you hear me now? We can hear you, f- we can hear you fine, mate. We can hear you fine. Um, are you ready for Game Week 4? Um, not yet, only because I'm holding back very slightly on making my final transfer. Uh, so I put my team in. Yeah, if you Who pop it... your final transfer? Uh, if it's you... at twenty one forty eight, Jason. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So have you got a question for J and O, a special guest this evening? Oh, I, I don't know. Do, do you have any wise words around wh- when's the right time to pop for Halaire and get rid of Wesley? I have to say, I'm on the, I'm on the same page. I don't think Wesley's going to shoot him out. Less about scoring goals, but more about what he's actually done on the pitch. He just seems a bit. Last season in in uh, in the Belgian league seems a lot more impressive for, versus the guy who seems to have turned up on the pitch. Uh, he seems to be a bit, I don't know, gangly, if that's probably the right way of describing him. Uh, he doesn't seem to have, I, I wouldn't say, as much goal presence, despite what many comments. Oh. Goal, what a fantastic individual. Jenny? Uh, yeah, it's kind of his job, mate. But Yeah, I mean, my instinct just off of the games I've watched is that Haller is a lot better an option. So I'd almost be like, you might as well do it this week if you can. Um, I think there's better options in that Villa side. I'd, I could be completely wrong and Wesley could settle in and suddenly we see what he was transferred in for. But I just think Sebastian Haller, after I always take more from someone performing in one of the, what I consider, because I don't want to offend anyone's league, one of the top five leagues. I think what you can do in Germany means more than what you can do in the Belgian league when it comes to moving to the Premier League. And 
for that, I would just, if I was making a call so early in the season, it would have to be Sebastian Haller. And if you can make the transfer this week, I'd do it now because Norwich isn't a bad game to be bringing him in. Yeah, Norwich defence aren't looking very good at all. They're a great attack, but their defence are leaking. Goals. And the thing is, Crystal Palace aren't too bad defensively. Mm. Usually at home, they're not necessarily great defensively, but they can do what they did, say, against Man United, where, to be fair, if it had gone a different way, they might have kept a clean sheet. So, you know, I just want to say just think that's a good picture. Thank, thank you for answering that question. I just want to say um, thank you to FPL Penguin for that very kind uh, super chat, 199. Yes. Uh, great to hear your game week thoughts tonight, JNO. He's very appreciative to being able to hear you uh, talk about his team and your, your thoughts. Um, and also earlier on, we had a, a kind super chat, uh, I think for £2 from uh, Fantasy Football Focus. We tried to get Nymphrea on Discord, but she's busy. She's doing other things. Um, but we do appreciate her stopping into the channel. Um, so any final did that answer your question by the way um it did what what i could actually get coming through i was getting a lot, a lot of uh breaking up in there i'm not quite sure why uh, uh I mean, hello yeah oh, well jno pretty much says get him in if you can and i think yeah. i think i i'm in agreement i i don't like that i don't like um wesley um as an option myself um like i said you've got ale you've got um tammy abraham um, I mean, they're, they're players I would have over Wesley myself. Um, but yeah, take that information as you will. Um, other than that, thank you ever so much for subscribing, by the way, Philip. Uh, any questions other than uh, other than the Wesley and the, or the Hal Air pick? Thanks, chaps. Well, I mean, your team's looking good, mate. Your team's looking really solid for game week four. <laughs> um, I think you'll be. I think you'll be fine. Have you done a transfer yet? Did you say? Uh, no, not this week, no. So I took I, a I hit just... last week. So I deliberately made three transfers using the two, three, and a, a minus four. I can't remember why I did that now. Um, but there was, I think there was some, it was the, again, the early movements in prices. Mm. Okay. So, I mean, I think you've got to choose between, um, you know, bringing in Haller or, you know, just saving your transfer and bring roll in your transfer over for the international break, which isn't a bad idea in itself. But thank you ever so much for coming on, Sej. Much appreciate it with your lovely, sultry voice. And we hope to speak to you soon. Okay, chaps. Cheers, Thanks. buddy. Bye. Take care now. See you, mate. Well, that's, that's it for the call-in, guys. Um, it's been it's been incredible having you guys on. Apologies for the slight audio problems with some of the callers. I will hopefully um, they can sort those issues out. And um, for the, the Skype, whenever you do a Skype session with two or more, three people or more, there's always, and, and, and I'm sure, Jay, I know you can attest to that. But funnily enough, funnily enough, you're now perfect. I mean, so, so the band... <laughs> Don't jinx it. Come the on. bandwidth. <laughs> the, oh, here we go. The bandwidth has been good to you, uh, good, good to us for the last uh, 15, 20 minutes. Um, but yeah, um, just again, um, we're just really grateful that you've taken your time this evening um, to come on air with us to talk to us about your, your game week for your team. Speak to a few of the call-ins um, on that community. Um, it's an absolute pleasure. I mean, I've been watching you um, pretty much since um, I would say this time last year. Um, so you know, and um, obviously it's. Um, the the variety now we're seeing more content creators come on and we're we're more than happy to um to have them on the show, um but yeah Steve do you want to um say anything before we uh we move towards the end? Uh, no, I think it's been a great a great show. It's been uh, wonderful having Jano on, and just more importantly, Jano, have you any final thoughts before we uh do our admin? <laughs> no, like it's been a pleasure. Thank you for having me on. Um, I've been a fan of your guys' content since you've uh, started. I think I picked you guys up last season, maybe midway through. Um, keep up the good work. And, yeah, you've got a great community. So we'd love to be back on. No, that, yeah, you, we, we'd be more than happy to have you back on. And um, it's been a pleasure. It really, really has. Thank you ever so much. And Steve-O, do the admin. Yeah, absolutely. The usual thing of... Uh... Just simply, if you've enjoyed the show tonight, just show your support by just simply hitting that like button. It does um, it does tell us how much you've enjoyed the show, to be honest with you. Um, also, if you are not a subscriber, but uh, you enjoy the content, we are pretty much a daily stream. So just simply hit that subscribe button. Follow us on at Elite FPL on Twitter. So follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Elite FPL. If you want to check out the wonderful website, 
that Jason has created. It's elitefpl.com. Basically, everything's anything you want to know about Elite FPL is either elitefpl.com or at elitefpl. Um, just a quick reminder that on Saturday, we are going to be doing Elite FPL Soccer Saturday. Um, it's probably going to hopefully be going live at 3 or around 3.30ish, but we're definitely doing it and we're pretty much going to be streaming from that moment all the way up to maybe once Jason takes over till about 10, 10 30-ish. Who knows? But there are going to be there's going to be one stream for the afternoon kickoffs. We're going to go for a bit of a break. I'm then going to cover the Burnley Liverpool game, and then I'm going to go off air, and then Jason's going to take over and then give his thoughts on the day's action for the evening slot. So that's going to be one hell of a long day for Elite FPL. So join us basically all day Saturday for that. Thank you. Other than that. Um, yeah, thanks for watching and really appreciate um, the support. Yeah, take care, guys. All the best. See you, guys. Bye. I, just, just of interest, where, whereabouts are you? Not, not in the world, but are you near like a an industrial um, machine or something? It's uh-huh. very. Uh, two seconds. Uh, just ask a couple of questions. I just need to get the door for yeah, a second. No Sorry. Problem, this man. is this is what happens when you're live. What's going on? Uh, no, not really. I'm waiting to go to gym. What about yourself? Um, live on YouTube doing a stream. Why do you feel that you're constantly changing your teammate? Is it just, it's just, just so I'm many ideas? So, so many ideas, so many different perspectives. I, br- I blame Brett Mollison for his five at back because when you see my new team. <laughs> wow. Brighton home, they couldn't buy a goal in the little last uh, season. <laughs> Well, I don't know. I don't know. Dan's got Dan's got Glenn Murray. I think he'll have a word to say about that. <laughs> I'm detecting possibly a German accent. I'm probably completely way out. But where are you calling us from? South Africa. <laughs> Actually, on the first day, I literally just typed in FPL, like first draft, and yours came up like first. Mm. So I thought, oh, well, I'll watch one of the live streams when it comes on. And then I thought, this is a bit long, isn't it? About two hours in. And then three hours later, <laughs> well, an hour later, I was like, yeah, they seem all right, you know. What do Steven's we- not that bad. I have one, que- I have one question for you. I, I, want, um, I want you to predict the order of the Elite FPL ranking. So, like, <laughs> who, who, do you think will, who do you think will finish first, second, and third out of y'all three this season? So it's certainly no disrespect to Dan, but it's certainly going to be between me and Jason. And right now, as it stands, I'd go with Jason because my history suggests that I'm going to be having a bad season. So I've got the uh, the five at the back. I just see a lot of value there. I feel like if I if I don't have Salah, I can spread the money elsewhere and maybe maybe get the points another way. Um... All the teams now, except for obviously Salah and Sterling, these players, a lot of players are going to change towards the start of the season just because of new transfers um, injuries that could happen and every, all of that so for me to tell you now like personally right now I'd say definitely if Tammy Abraham or Batshuayi are cheap I'd get one of them just because I don't care about the Man United we can score against them at least two or three Hey guys, this season we're using Discord. It's a text and voice application where you can talk all things FPL with fellow community members. You can post your team in the Rate My Team, talk in the general chat, you can look at transfer news, look at awesome GIFs, sign up for our Cash Mini League, look at our previous podcasts, and even join us live on air in one of our streams. We look forward to seeing you guys. Link is in the description or look at the code on screen.